Thank you everyone so much for joining us today. Today we're going to learn about Jesus is God. Now I know we st I said that the importance of baptism was going to be the next lesson, but I am saving that for youth night so we can learn the importance of baptism at youth night this week. So we're going to skip over that lesson until youth night and learn about Jesus is God. But before we get into that, I'm going to talk a bit about camp. So just about a week ago, I came back from our annual camp meeting and it was so amazing the preaching was phenomenal we had our youth camp first the preachers were dylan morgan and caleb herring many of you probably know them they were had amazing messages that they preach and also we at family camp this year we got a new youth president and i'd like to say congratulations to brother walter and sister walter on becoming the new youth president we also got a new youth secretary brother levi pelletier and we also got a new superintendent for the whole entire district brother blackshear and i'd like to say congratulations to all those people on becoming superintendent youth president and youth secretary and now we are going to begin with reading two pages from our Jesus is Calling book. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've been getting not making a video because I'm a bit sick still. I'm getting better, you know, the camp sickness. I have a bit of a camp sickness. So, but I'm slowly getting better. So now let's read these two pages. You are on the white, right path. Listen more to me and less to your doubts. I'm leading you along the way. I designed just for you, therefore it is a lonely way, humanly speaking, but I go before you as well as alongside you, so you are never alone. Do not expect anyone to understand full, fully my ways with you any more than you can commit my darlings with others. I am leaving to you the path of life day by day and moment by moment, as I said to my disciples, Peter, so I repeat to you, follow me. And that's from Psalms 119, 105, and John 21, 22. Now we are going on to our next chapter. This chapter is focused on this verse here, John 10, for when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. So we're going to read the first page of this and then the second page is for next time. When something in your life or thoughts make your anxiety come to me and talk about it, bring me your <coughs> prayer and patience with thanksgiving saying, Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to trust you more. Through the lesson of trust that I send you to come, you wrap differently to the beliefs far outward the cost will develop trust will bring you many blessings not the least of which my is my peace i have promised you to keep you in perfect peace to exalt that i trust in me lord has broken it backwards teaching the that peace is a result of having enough money passion injuries and security systems my peace however is such an all community gift that is of all circumstances to lose everything else if you gain my peace you are rich indeed and that's from philippians 4 6 isaiah 26 3 second thessalonians 3 16 and that's all from the new king james version the next time we are going to continue on with our fourth chapter i believe with jesus is calling then um let's say a lesson now let's go in to prayer before we get into our lesson about Jesus is God. Let me just find my prayer request list. Pray for my friend who wants to get back into church. My friend who's been having seizures. My friend who wants to start a peace loving club. Vicki Harrison for healing and strength to be able to sing again. Taylor Glover for a miracle for her and her family. Schools, teachers, families, students, and I have one more prayer request. Since Alaska Yukon District is having a lot of new leaders, I'd like us to pray for those new leaders that God would guide 
the new leaders, Brother Walcher, Brother Levi, and Brother Blackshear. Now let's begin in prayer. Jesus, thank you for allowing me to make this video, even though I'm not feeling super great right now, even though I'm feeling a bit sick, help me to get better and help those people who got sick from camp to get better soon. And help my friend who wants to get back into church, that she gets back into church right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Pray right now for my friend who's been having seizures, that those seizures go away, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Right now I pray for Vicki Harrison for healing and strength to be able to sing again right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Right now, I pray for Taylor Glover for a miracle for her and her family. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I pray right now for schools, teachers, families, and students all over the world. That you would speak to them and that you would move in their lives right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right now, in my final prayers, I pray for Brother Walter, Brother Levi, and Brother Blackshear, as they become new leaders in the Alaska Yukon District, that you would touch them and speak to them right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let's go on to our lesson for today. Jesus is God, and we're going to begin with our preview. Who was Jesus, an anointed prophet of God? The greatest prophecy of all time, a Hebrew Jewish leader who never dreamed of an impact he had on have on history some people think jesus was nothing more than the first century mother Teresa. the scriptures however tell a different story now i am going to read and list the following scriptures so what i'm going to do is i'm going to list a scripture then i'm going to read it to you and you can look it up in your bible if you want to too to make sure it's in there we're going to start now off with titus 2 13 so if you could look up uh, that on your Bible is where I'll, I pull it up in here. Again, that's Titus 2.13. Now I'm going to read it to you. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now the next example is Second Peter 1.1. 1, 1. Just give me a moment to look that up. Now I'm going to read it again. Again, that's Second Peter 1.1. 1, 1. Simon Peter, servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obeyed like prophecy faith with us through the righteous of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. And then the next example is Hebrews 1 8. And I'm just going to look that up real quickly. Again, that's Hebrews 1 8. And I'm just going to read it to you here. But unto the Son he hath saved, thy throne of God, O God, is for ever and ever a scrap of righteousness is the scripture of thy kingdom and then our final example is john twenty twenty six through 28 now give me a moment to look that up again that's john twenty twenty six through 28 and after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors, bringing shout and sudden in the mist, and said, Peace be unto you. Then he said he to Thomas, Reach thy, his, thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach thy hand, and trust into my side, and not fearless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hasn't, hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. Um, the meaning of these passages may come through clearer in a modern Bible translation. Now, um, in your own time, I'd like you guys to identify what the clear translations are of these. Um, and I want you to identify what the apostle, ap apostles believed about Jesus. And I'll give you guys about five seconds to think about that, and I'll tell you the answer. Five, four, three, two, one. Now I'm going to tell you. The answer is, they believed he was God. So the apostles believed that Jesus is God. So they believe what we believe today, that Jesus is God. And in case 
some of you don't believe don't didn't know that Jesus is God well today we're here to discover it and find the truth about Jesus being God now we are going to read Psalms 139 um, 14 and you can look those up in your Bibles Again, that's Psalms 139 14 I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelously are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well we can praise God because we are fearfully and wonderfully made if the prisman hadn't said so the Bible tells us early as Genesis 1 that we are a special creature and now we are going to read what it says in Genesis 1 27 and that is the first book of the Bible, in case you didn't know, Genesis is the first book of the Bible. And it's Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his own image. Imagine that. God creates us in his own image. Isn't that amazing? In the image of God created him, male and female created he them so we he created he him so god created he him male and female created he them now i'm gonna just add in verse 28 here and i'm gonna read it to you and god blessed them god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and that subdue it and have dominion over all fish of the sea and over all fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Just as God dwelled in a physical body, he pit your soul and spirit, all of our soul and spirit, the part of you that will exist even after you die. So when your physical body dies, your soul will still be alive. Body, soul, spirit. This is you. So body soul and spirit is you and me but it's also a reflection of the amazing image of the one true god his imness of the amazing image of the one true god in his invisible extra as the lord of all and he, and he sorry about that and he lived on earth in a human body jesus his spirit, the Holy Spirit, commands all with all those who believe and obey him. Now I'm going to read Exodus three eleven through fourteen to you. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh? And that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said certainly, I will be with thee. And this shall be token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of the mountain, wait, out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers <coughs> has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what, it, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said thus, Shall I say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent unto you. Over a thousand and four hundred years ago, after Moses chanted the great I am on the mountain of Herb, Jesus was having an encounter of another kind. Jewish leader, respecter of his popularity, were discouraged to try and catch him in the falsehood. They wanted to destroy Jesus, certainly to prove him worth of death when jesus said i when jesus said truly i say to you before abraham was i am these jews 
fully led in history of Moses release that Jesus was making a statement he was God so when God, Jesus said I am that I am he was making a statement that he is and was God <coughs> sorry about my phone here it's really blowing up here um, according to Old Testament law the punishment for such uh, was death. Um, and you can look up Leviticus 2416 on your own time to understand that more. Jesus managed to get away, but this wasn't the last time he'd face the throat of death for his claim of dignity. And now I'm going to read John 10, 30-33. I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shown you from my father. For which of these works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For good work we stone thee, not but for blasphemy, and because thou, being men, mistaketh that fault for God. Jesus answered them, It is, is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has to sacrificed and set into the world, thou blasphemy, because I said I am the Son of God. If I do not do the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do thy you believe not me. Believe the works that ye may know. And believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. <coughs> Sorry. So a little dry throat here. Now we are going to read John 1, 1, and 14. Just give me a moment to find it. In the beginning was the word. So in the beginning was word and the word was with God and the word was God so the word was God now we're going to read verse 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we behold his glory and the glory as the of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth John's purpose for writing his gospel was to reveal the nature of Jesus. Jesus had no earthly father in the flesh. He was literally the son of God. You can look to John 23 through 31 for example of that. When John started his gospel by saying that Jesus was the word, logs in the original Greek, he was using the term he knew the audience would understand, saying that Jesus was the logs, meant he was a living word, the creator of the universe the one through whom all things came unto be. Jesus was the one true God. And you can look through to Colossians 1.16, Hebrews 1.2, for examples of that. Now I'm going to read to you John 14.8-9. Philip said unto him, Lord, shall us the father and sacrifice jesus said unto him have i been so long time with you and yet hast thou not known me phil he that hath seen me hath seen the father and how sayest thou then seest the show the us the father believest thou not that i am the father and the father in me the words that i speak unto you i speak not <coughs> My, uh, myself, the Father that dwelleth in me, he dwelleth, sorry, and the Father in me, or else believe me in very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, that works that I do say, he does also, and greater works than, 
thee shall he do, because I go unto the Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall not ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give me you another comforter, that he may abundeth forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the word cannot receive, because it seemeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth within you, with you, and he shall be in you. I will not leave you come for this, I will come to you yet a little while, and the world sent me no more, but ye seem because I live, ye shall live also. The disciples believed Jesus was the Messiah, God's chosen one. Sorry about this. <clears throat> the disciples believed Jesus was the Messiah, God's chosen one, who would have been salvation to humankind. But sometimes they could wrap their minds around the idea of Jesus being the actual explanation, image of the <clears throat> of the creature. And you can look to Colossians 1.15 for examples of that. Sorry about that again. In the passage we just read. Okay. And then you can look at to John 20, 2018 for example of occasion we got the glimpse of what it looked like when Revelation finally hit. In the passage we just read Philip exam uh, we all have. He wanted a deep meaningful encounter with God. At this, Jesus going to uh, Philip, you've been with me all this time and you still don't know who I am. If you lived in the Bible times and believed there was only one true God, how do you think he would have responded to Jesus' claims that he was God? And on your own time, you can read Acts 4.12 and John 14.6. Why is the belief that all religions lead to heaven false? How is it that Jesus is often referred to both as the Son of God and the Son of Man? As God in the flesh, Jesus was both divine and human. How does this explain why he often prayed in his way? Jesus prayed out of human ways was both an example and a real need to pray. Uh, read First Timothy three sixteen on your own time. In what ways does this verse describe Jesus? I ask into prayer. Lord, the Bible says you have seated us with your own blood. Acts twenty twenty eight. We are amazed and humbled. Help us fall in love with you, Jesus, and whom so immersed, and you as the creator and the king of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's get into ending with our plus. God became flesh and came to die for our sins because it was the only way our debts against the Holy Ghost could be paid. A greater being could never have happened to the captive to take on such a loud way. Your thoughts down about why Jesus was a perfect sin sacrifice. And you can do that on your own time. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.